everybody. Paul Mack here. You know, of all the tools on my farm, probably most of the tools are used for woodworking in some capacity. And, uh, you know, as far as working wood is concerned, there's basically three basic actions you can do to wood. You can split it, you can saw it, and you can actually drill a hole in it. And uh, there's a lot of ways um, to drill holes in wood. One of the favorite everybody uses nowadays is the electric drill with a bit in it. Um, I reach for it, you know, when I'm in a hurry to do something, but I would never want to be without the old standbys, uh, the old hand tools for drilling wood. And some of them, some of the common ones, this is a an auger, a T auger, because it looks like a T, I guess. And then there's a little tool called a breast drill. Um, basically, you put a round shank bit in here. You hold this handle here, this handle here, and then this goes right on your shoulder like this, and you can put downward pressure as you're drilling something. And then you go on down the line. You've got smaller um, drills, this little hand drill here. Some people call this a egg beater drill, you know, looks like an egg beater. And then on down the line, you've got little, little bitty, it was cute, little bitty T augers called gimlets. And these are used for starting pilot holes or whatever. And it looks like about an eighth inch and maybe even on down. But today I want to talk about my favorite farm tool, the brace and bit, brace and bit. Now, this is one of the first tools that my daddy actually showed me how to use when I was little. In fact, here's my little, this is my little bracing bit from my handy Andy tool set when I was a kid. Look, it still, still spins, still works. You put a little bit in there and then tighten down with a flat head screw. My little handy Andy bracing bit. How cute. Even the larger ones, th this is a good tool to get kids started. Uh, young, young folks started with uh, woodworking or uh, hand tools because it's relatively safe. I mean, you don't want to run with it uh, and you don't want to stab anybody with it, but uh, give them some scrap wood and, you know, get them started drilling holes and it's really good for them to learn. It's a lot of fun too. Now, as I said, this part from here over is the brace, uh, the part that's actually used to do the work. And this is the bit and these bits are interchangeable. You just untwist that and the bit comes out and you can put all sizes, different sizes of bits in there. And the bits for a bracing bit commonly have a square tapered shank or tang on them. Shank, that's a good word, that fits down in two little jaws that as you screw down on that, the jaws tighten up and hold that square bit firm so that it won't twist as you're doing the work. This is one of the problems with uh, round shank bits is that if you don't get it tight enough, they can turn on you if you get you know, in a real bind. They still make these braces, but in some of the more modern ones, you might find three jaws, and those are more suitable for either square tapered or the, the round shank bits. But generally on the old ones, you'll find two jaws, and some of the sometimes on some of the more modern ones in the jaw, uh, you'll see that the jaw actually have a, has a slot in it. So they can accept a round, you know, a round shank bit like that. But again, you gotta t crank down really hard on them so they don't twist if you ever get in a bind with them. But the, the square ones, that's what we wanna talk about today, the, the typical square shank bit. When you're looking for these bits, normally they come in a, a set of about 13 normally. And uh, a, a whole set, brand new can be expensive if you can even find them made brand new and an antique one is surely hard to find because it's hard to find them in the original box or set or case or pouch with the original 13 still there but individually they're i've found that they're pretty easy to find at flea markets or antique stores and invariably you know you go to the auction and you buy that box with looks like piled up with treasures you get it home you're taking out all your treasures and looking, and invariably in the bottom of the box, there's going to be one or two uh, old square tapered bits in there that you can add to your collection. You know, to, to get all, let's see, there's generally 13 of them. To get all 13 is kind of like a treasure hunt. It's actually more fun to go searching around and, and 
checking off uh, which ones you you have and which ones you still need to find and then finding them at that flea market and and buying them relatively cheap this is kind of like a scavenger hunt it's a lot of fun you know collect all 13 these bits are numbered this is how you tell them apart without having to just measure you know how wide they are they are numbered since they're about generally 13 different bits you've got numbers 4 through 16 and that tells you it, you know what size they are I, I'll, I'll show you it's kind of neat chalkboard if you find a a bit that says number four on it that means you come over here and you think four you always add a 16 what is that called a denominator not really good with math um, you, you've put a four over a 16 if it's a number four, which means that is if you, uh, you know, take it on down to its uh, one quarter inch. That's a quarter inch bit. If it's a uh, number five, if it's got number five stamped on the side, that means it's five sixteenths inch. You know, there's no dividing it down. Let's say it's a number uh, eight. Then you, uh, eight sixteenths equals one half inch. Math was never my strong suit. And then, of course, a number 16 would be one inch. Okay, it's real easy. Sometimes the bits come in, as I said, cases, wooden cases, and you'll see antique cases. I love to see those at the flea markets and auctions, especially with a whole set in them. Or pouches, you know, that were easy to carry around and carry out uh, on the field as you were working. But uh, I just made a simple holder for mine. I quartered a log here and drilled holes in it so that the square taper shank goes right in the hole there. And I've got them labeled as to, you know, what size is what. Now, a, a bit has a feed screw. Uh, that's the point that gets everything started. As it turns into the wood, that feed screw is very important because that, as, it's, as you're screwing that into the wood, and it also is, you know, tapered, and as it's going into the wood, it pulls the rest of the bit down so that it's constantly going down um, almost regardless of how much pressure you put on it. It's not just your pressure that's sending it down into the wood, but it's that feed screw that's pulling it into the wood. And uh, once you, it's, it's probably best when you're drilling a hole in wood to put another scrap piece of wood under that wood so that when you drill down into it, it's drilling, it doesn't tear the bottom out. It doesn't splinter the bottom out, but begins to drill into the other piece of wood and makes a clean bottom cut on the main piece of wood that you're trying to drill a hole in. Either that or be very careful that when you're drilling down into a piece of wood, if you don't have a scrap piece or a scrap piece that's even enough, when that uh, feed drill begins, when it begins to come through the other side, watch it carefully, and flip that board over, put your feed screw in the little pinhole that it made and continue the cut. And that way you'll have a nice clean cut on both sides and it won't be jagged on one side. That's a good tip to remember. Now, sometimes, you know, if you find these bits and they're old and rusty, if the feed screw is too rusty so that you can't even see the threads anymore, uh, it'd be really hard to, I mean, you could do it. It'd be really hard to file that back into shape it's probably best to just um, chunk that one or, or don't chunk it give it to your blacksmith friend because uh, these are you know i'm certain these are high carbon steel you can put them in a forge heat them up uh, hammer them flat they look pretty cool and you can make decorative you know your blacksmith friend could make decorative hooks for you that look pretty cool old bit hooks i guess you know if you you get one that's you know not as shiny anymore it's maybe got a little bit of rust on it you can certainly take it to the old wire brush and get it all cleaned up or electrolysis bath certainly always works and then you'll be able to see that number real clear again usually or you can put it in the old vinegar bath uh, for a day or two or three just watch it you know pay attention to it and and remember when you get it out of the vinegar bath to give it a 
baking soda bath to halt that uh, acid action so that it doesn't continue to rust. And then, you know, put it after it's dry, put it on back on the wire brush, get it all shiny, and, and leave it with a light film of oil on there so that it won't re-rust. And then you've got you, your next bit from your, you know, scavenger hunt. The bits have um, two other little features on them normally. Uh, one is little spurs, two little spurs on opposing sides, and those spurs are, are pretty sharp too, and they, they need to remain sharp because what they're doing is, as it spins, it's cutting your outline uh, for where the lips, and the lips are horizontal, the spurs are vertical, and then two lips on either side, and the lip is the cutting force that's actually cutting across the grain to make the hole. The spurs are basically cutting out the circle as you're going down so that the lips are cutting wood out cleanly and not jagged. And so if your spurs are, are get dull, your cut is going to be jagged. So that's why you want to make sure your spurs stay sharp. And when you're sharpening the lips or the spurs, you don't ever want to sharpen on the outside uh, or the top going this way of the lip because you'll change the shape of it. You'll change actually minutely, you'll change the diameter and, and you'll do damage to the, you'll ruin the bit. You want to, when you're sharpening a spur, you want to sharpen it from the inside kind of up. It's kind of hard angle to get to. You might, might even have to, I don't know. It's going to take a small file to be able to do that. And you want to go very slowly and do it correctly. Just don't get in a hurry. And if for some reason down the road you need to sharpen the, uh, it gets dull and it's not taking the wood out and you need to sharpen the lips, make sure that you sharpen them. It's kind of hard to show you here from this direction and not from the top. It, I mean, it looks easy to sharpen it this way, but that's what you don't want to do because it'll certainly uh, cut terribly if you do that. You want to sharpen from the inside of the lip going that way. There are two types of bits. Um, one of them, it's real obvious to see the difference. One looks like that and one looks like that. This is an Irwin style bit and this is a Jennings style bit and they're just named after uh, the company I suppose that came up with both these designs. This one just is a twisted, you know, looks like a twisted piece of metal, just like that. And the Irwin style, you can basically see the shaft in the center. It's almost like a, a barber pole going around the shaft in the center. And really that's the only difference. There's really no, they both cut. I mean, they both make you a hole, so uh, that works. I want to show you though, an adjustable bit. This is a neat little invention that somebody came up with. And this actually does larger size holes. Uh, because above one inch, I don't, I don't really even know that you find a square tapered uh, shaft bit above one inch. I guess it's possible, but generally what you find are these. I suppose this can do one inch. I'm thinking I've never even uh, cranked it down to see how small it can go. But it can, it can do larger than one inch. And there's a set screw right here that, uh, well, actually not a set screw, but a screw, an adjustment screw that when you turn it, it spins, um, the, the, there's little gears here, and it spins around and causes the spur to go out further or to come in either way. And it has the screw right there to pull it on in. So basically, it, you can adjust the, uh, the diameter of your hole with a, an adjustable bit. These are real handy to have around and they'll fit right in your brace there. Besides the normal bits for cutting holes and the adjustable bit, they have made other things, other types of bits that fit into the, uh, or other types of accessories, I should say, that fit into a brace. For instance, these look pretty old. Uh, they're basically a flat screwdriver head. Um, there's, um, I got three of them here that I've collected in boxes over the years from auctions or whatever, and they all have the square tapered shank to go in your brace. So basically you're able to turn your brace into a screwdriver even way back then. Isn't that neat? Uh, there's all, there's different little options here. There's um, even one, a square, I have a square brace or a square tapered uh, shank with a kind of a gimlet on top. Here is a socket head. 
you know, you can put sockets on there and actually turn your brace into a wrench for tightening um, nuts on bolts and so forth. Here's a good one. I think this got a magnet in it. It's for, you know, little uh, roofing screws. You know, it'll hold a roofing screw in there with a hex head and you can turn your uh, brace into, you know, a, a roofing tool for putting down tin with screws. And then I've got countersinks there for uh, drilling down into wood. If you're going to put a, a, a wood screw down there and you can, you want that screw flush with uh, the surface of the wood, little countersinks for your brace. Reamers. I've got a couple of reamers. I think I've got a bigger reamer back here. And those are different um, cone shaped reamers to put in your brace for reaming out larger holes for, you know, whatever. I have no idea what this is. It, it goes in the brace though. <laughs> Handy to have if you could figure out what it does. Yeah, you know, I've even seen some uh, um, some square papered shanks uh, that have um, tenon cutters. You know that that's real handy to cut a tenon that, that goes into a mortise. Those are those would be handy to have. Now braces uh, braces work well at low speeds. Obviously these drills are low speed drills. They're they're not meant to you know, go fast. So brace doesn't have to go fast to be able to do its work because it's the, it's the force, you know, it's the force that you're putting on it to do the work. This handle here is meant for pressure so that you can put steady pressure on it, but it's basically this turning action. And if you'll notice when you, when you go to look at different braces, maybe even in your collection, you've got several braces and uh, sometimes they have different, um, you know, this would be the center and sometimes they have different the handles have different radius, uh, radiuses, radii, uh, ra radius I. Um, they have different lengths from here to here. And uh, like for instance, this one is, um, you can tell that that one is about an inch or so um, longer. Uh, from the center point out to the handle because you can get a little more leverage out of it, a little more torque. So keep that in mind when you're buying one. You may need one that's got a you know, long ray um, length or one that has a shorter length for, for different purposes. You probably noticed um, th this has a little mechanism down here. You see some little gears here and it's got a little mechanism here and this one this one has it also. Um, it's actually a ratcheting mechanism. Some of the older ones don't have that at all. It's just simply you untwist it. By the way, this one's stuck. I'm trying to oil that and get that out of here. Just bought it at an auction, by the way. This one does not have the ratcheting uh, mechanism in it, but these do. And this is why, because it's very cool. It's almost like, you know, a, a ratchet uh, for, uh, for sockets. Uh, because you can, depending on how you set it, you can turn it this way and your, your action is going. And then when you turn it this way, it ratchets back. Basically, it's for, you know, drilling holes in a corner, you know, where you may not make be able to make the full 360 degree turn. You can drill and then ratchet back, drill, ratchet back, drill, ratchet back, and it'll still work. And to, um, you can change directions almost kind of like a, you know, regular ratchet. You can change directions just by turning it that way or turning it that way and it uh there you go you kind of hear it hear it ratcheting there and then that way and then turn it and it'll go the other way like, like that it's not making the sound but it will do it there there it went as far as uh oiling them up and you know keeping them in, in pretty good shape the uh the the top handle here uh, sometimes they have a little hole in them for oil and this one happens to have a little oil hole there for oiling it up and keeping it going. Sometimes they don't have that. These other two don't have that. You just maybe drop an oil, a little drop of oil right there and then just kind of spit it around. You'll be surprised at how freer, how much freer it is. And then for this handle, just a bit of oil right there. Try not to get a lot on the wood, but just drop it down in there and kind of work it in. And then as far as the, uh, head is concerned. They're very, very simple mechanisms. Uh, I don't have one that's not a ratcheting head, but they're, they're just very simple. You unscrew this all the way and you'll see the two jaws, they just kind of fall apart and 
real easy to stick back together. This, uh, the jaws inside of this one actually, or some of these more modern ones, actually have little springs that kind of, you know, hello, how are you? I'm fine. I have little springs in them that go back and forth. And you can see that the threaded head there, by the way, you know, take a little bit of grease and just put a little dab of grease, not a lot, and oil it up or whatever you want to use. And th this would go in here like this. And uh, then you can just, going to have to clamp the jaws down to get, get it back on there like that. Get it in there. I'm doing it the wrong way. Uh, like that right there. And then uh, get that, get those threads started on it and it's back in shape. You got your little grease in there, a little bit of oil, and you're good to go for the next uh, 70 years or until you die, whichever comes first. So there you have it. All oiled up and ready to go again. I guess that will about do it for the old brace and bit. If you'd like to add to the discussion on brace and bits, then please do so in the comment section. And feel free to subscribe and or like this video and please share it with other like-minded farm folks. It really helps the channel a whole lot. I'm Paul Mack and I will talk at you later. R-A-D, R-A-D-I-U-S, radius, noun, plural, radii, also radiuses. What? I said that. I said that at the beginning.